Hey gang, what's going on? Welcome back to my little corner of the internet. My name's Alex. I hope you're doing really well today. Um, we're talking about the Glary GST electric guitar today. So Glary sent me this out a couple of months ago. Real world stuff's gone in the way, which is why the review's not been out before now. And I finally had the time to sit down with it, play with it, and uh, put together some thoughts on it. Let's talk about the specifications and what it comes with first. So I don't know where this was made, because it doesn't say. I'm going to assume it was made in China. Um, it's got a basswood body. They say it weighs six pounds. It does not. This is significantly lighter than six pounds. It's a maple neck with a maple fingerboard, 25 and a half inch scale with 22 frets. I can see the 22nd there. I'm going to assume that the rest of them are somewhere in between, which is great. Uh, we've got, uh, what else did I say? Uh, 22 frets, six strings, obviously, uh, six inline tuners that are made from metal. Uh, a nut that's made from plastic and these really really sharp unkind string trees here as well the nut itself is around the sides it's cut okay but the uh the string slots in it are not cut that well um what else do we have uh, we've got the bridge which has got a trem arm on it this particular one is actually uh, sort of screwed down fairly hard onto the uh, onto the body so i don't get a lot of play there uh, the trem block itself is amongst the thinnest I have ever seen on any guitar, so you can kind of forget about any sustain and tuning stability from that side. Um, we've got single, single, single pickups. We've got a five-way switch, volume, tone, and tone. And it's done the vintage thing where this tone here doesn't affect the, uh, the bridge pickup. Uh, we've got generic frets. I don't know what they're made from. I'm going to assume maybe nickel, but we get no information about the material that they're made from or the size of them. So I'd say maybe maybe sort of jumbo-ish size, maybe. Um, yeah, so that's the neck. Uh, the material there, the edges are sharp and unfinished. The neck job itself is actually quite poor. We've got large parts of it that are missing sort of like that sanding kind of finish. So sort of like raw rough wood here, the spots of that all the way up and down the neck. Uh, we've got our die cast tuners which feel light and flimsy. Um, the neck pocket itself, however, is actually cut pretty well. Um, so the CNC machine did a really good job there. Uh, the fret markers, we've got black dots on the side, but um, it looks like someone drew them on the felt tip. Anyway, what else do we have? Uh, so, it comes with a trem arm, which is nice. It comes with a bag. So, this is one step up from a plastic bag. It's a little bit thicker. It's got straps on. It will not protect your guitar, but it's nice to have. Um, it comes with a pick. It comes with a connector cable as well. Now, they've not said instrument cable, but connector cable. Um, I wouldn't let this within a country mile of my amplifier, but there we go. Um, so, as I said, £70 for this guitar. Is it is it worth it? Um, let's talk about the playability of it. Um, and we'll do that while we play some sounds. So, we're going to start on the clean channel on my Blue Guitar Amp 1. It's going to a Hughes and Kettner 2x12 recorded with a Rode NT1 Black Edition. So let's just play ourselves a lovely little G chord and see where we are. I don't think we're in tune, that's where we are. So one of the things about this guitar is it does not hold its tuning whatsoever. Um, I tuned this shortly before I started recording this video and it's, or it's already sort of flipping in and out so see that's the G so G strings are not being in tune name a more iconic duo um, but yeah it's like the tuning stability on this thing is absolutely horrendous um, there we go okay so let's see where we are now And I don't know if you can tell, but that just sounds so bad, so lifeless. Let's just try the middle position. Mm -hmm. 
and the thing is, with these carbon-coated nano strings that they've got, which feel horrendous as well, by the way, so really cheap strings on them as well, this guitar is it's not fun to play, which is which which is kind of a problem when you're buying an instrument because it's a hobby that you want to partake in and have fun with. Uh, so let's just try the bridge pickup. So aside from it sort of vaguely contouring to the sound that you'd expect from the three pickups, it's um, these pickups aren't good. They're not good at all. You can add like a little bit of special sauce, so this is just a little bit of reverb. And these mistakes I'm making, they're not because of my playing, he said, but this guitar... It's like this guitar is actively fighting against me to to want to be played. And like my fingers are feeling grimy and sticky already, just, just from playing on the fretboard. And it, it's an all-round not great experience. It doesn't sound very good. It doesn't play very well. And then when we add a little bit of uh, a little bit of crunch to it, this is I mean, just have a listen. <laughs> Just, it just sounds like I'm playing through an entry level amp. And as I said, this is a blue guitar, Iridium into a Hughes and Kettner 2x12 through a £70 guitar that these guys are doing the heavy lifting here, okay? They are really trying to make this thing sound decent and they are failing. The pickups are just so lifeless and dull and just not good sounding. And the thing is, this is a £70 guitar as well, so you've got to think, how much did all these requisite parts cost to put together? Because someone's still got to make a profit out of selling this, right? And I've seen people who've said, oh, I think uh, I also said there's a strap as well. I forgot about that. People have said, oh yeah, well you can upgrade them. No, no, just buy another guitar. Spend a little bit more money on something that's of a higher build standard uh, that's nicer to play. So you spend another £40, you've got yourself a Squire Bullet Strat or a Squire Bullet Telly. Spend another £70 or get yourself up to about £189.99. You've got yourself one of these, the Squire Affinity Stratocaster, a great, great entry level guitar. Um, you know, and on top of that, you know, you spend a little bit more money if you want the entire package. Then you've got the um, you've got the bullet strap starter kits that come with like a 10, 15 watt amp. You've got the Harley Benton kits with the ST20, the TE20, I think the uh, their starter model is, that come with uh, a starter amp as well. And they're not great by any stretch of the imagination in terms of like real world guitar stuff, but they're they're good affordable guitars, you know. And they're just so much better than this. And it's out of tune again. I can hear it's out of tune again. But with this guitar, someone's tried to... Or someone's identified the affordable guitar market, right? And they've gone, what's the cheapest guitar that we can get away with making? And it turns out that it's around the £70 mark. And they've made a guitar. It's like, on the surface, a guitar for £70 is decent but the guitar itself is not up to scratch not up to scratch in the slightest and the problem is is that i've seen guitars or this guitar reviewed on other youtube channels and what they've done is they've put it through post-processing through thousands of pounds of production gear and they've got it to sound okay and that's not what the people who buy this guitar are going to be doing right 
they're going to be plugging into your first practice amp. They're going to be playing it acoustically. It, and like putting it through all of that technology does not take away from the fact that this is not a pleasant guitar to play. It could sound phenomenal, it doesn't, but the user experience is is so underwhelming and so disappointing that, so, as, as I said, someone's tried to make the most affordable guitar that they can, they've done it with no thought to what a guitar actually is and what it needs to be able to do. So in terms of the Glary standard Stratocaster, I'd, I'd say avoid it. If you're looking to start playing guitar, start looking at your Squire Bullet Strats, Yamaha Pacificas, old, old school guitars that loads of new players back in the day uh, pick up for a hundred or so pounds. Really good entry level guitars. Uh, entry level Harley Bentons, like the East Coast stuff that Anderton sell, just, just not this, you know? Not this at all. This makes me sad. And I know that on this channel I play more expensive guitars. Um, even like the thing is not even that more exp much more expensive. Like I've got a 500 pound Court, a 370 pound Harley Benton. I've got the Charvel behind me as well, and that's kind of the exception there. But in terms of playing this against the Court or even this Affinity Strat, just in that kind of particular comparison, I'd say that yeah, you can spend five times the amount of money on a guitar and get five times the guitar if it comes to getting the Harley Benton or the Court or, um, you know, I, I'd, I'd even wager that you could say to, I'd spend eight or nine times the money on this and get a used Charvel and it'd be worth it. But don't do that if you're a beginner. Don't do that if you're a beginner, okay? Start off with a decent, affordable new guitar. But whatever you do, like the Glary isn't it, I'm afraid. Um, so there we go. Let me know what you think in the comments. I'm sure Glary will have some words about this video uh, when I send it to them. And uh, let me know what you think. And until I talk to you all again, look after yourselves, take care, and uh, keep on playing guitar. Bye for now.